Yo, Trinity here. Today is the update for Friday the 13th. We're about to check out the Virtual Cabin 2.0 for the very first time. Oh. <laughs> I've been waiting on this to come out. Oh shit, here we go. Wait, come this all shit. Here we go, Doyle. <laughs> Loading Virtual Cabin, launching Virtual Cabin release. We might get to play, we'll see. Oh, snap, first person view. Oh, who the fuck is that? Oh, shit. Blue cap. So much info, they even have information on the blue cap. Doors locked behind me. I'll check out this computer, check for updates, reset virtual cabin, change date. Huh. Huh. Every Friday the 13th movie has been released on a Friday, but only 4 out of 10 have been released on Friday the 13th. Huh. It's pretty badass. Huh. Jason. After the success of the first movie, Frank Minesco Sr., the CEO of Paramount Pictures, wanted to make the franchise into a serial with each movie having a different villain. It was Steve Miner, the director of the second and third films, who made Jason into the series villain. Huh. The virtual cabin is just this big old cabin that has all kinds of hidden Easter eggs and stuff. Wow. A depiction of the final scene at the Voorhees house. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's where Jason's running. Oh, that is so cool. Alright, who's this creepy-ass motherfucker? Hold on. Maybe I should put... Uh, hello. Welcome to the virtual cabin. I'm Chuck Brent. Start that over. Sorry. So I can hear it. Okay, so did you want to do an intro? Uh, hello. Welcome to the Virtual Cabin. I'm Chuck Brengard, CEO of Illphonic, and we are the developers behind Friday the 13th, the game, which you're currently playing now. <laughs> which you're currently playing there right now. You want to say to the fans? Sure. I just want to say thanks for playing and supporting the game. Our fan base has been incredible. This project has exceeded even our wildest dreams. And that's because of all your continued and amazing support. So where are we? I'm a soul so this is the virtual man. cabin. Two point to be exact. The virtual cabin was a way for our backers to check out new art assets and discover a few hidden Easter eggs as we were building the game. It was a really oh, engaging Sunderman's way to show champion. a sneak peek at what we were developing. So, why bring it back? A ton of work went into researching the Friday the thirteenth films for the game, and we wanted to present a fun way to go behind the scenes and oh, learn shit, more about the music how the movies just and the Consider this as an expanded virtual museum. A space where you can explore the lore of Friday the 13th and take it all in. Who knows? There might even be a few new Easter eggs to discover. If you go digging deep enough... <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so ominous. <laughs> okay. I am in love with this. This is what I've been... Why is he just sitting on the couch so fucking creepily? The part of young Jason was played by Ari Lehman. Actually, I got his autograph. He actually moved right where I, uh, right where I live. So that's actually oh. kind of cool. Where Originally director seen in Lewisburg. Originally director seen Cunningham wanted to cast his son, Noel. However, Noel's mother did not want her son to spend hours in a freezing New Jersey lake. I don't blame her. And he also started a band called First Jason. I advise you not to listen to it. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Double Vision actress Camilla Moore auditioned for the role of Samantha Do when what? the filmmakers discovered that she had a twin sister, Carrie. They offered them both the foxy roles of Tina and Terry. This was not the first time Carnilla and Carrie's acted together. The both having already starred in double mint gum commercials. Oh, that was them. That's kind of cool. Oh, fanzine comics. 
Well, it's not comic, it's actually just magazine, but still. That's cool. Right now, I'm, I know there's like hidden Easter eggs and like actual stuff you're supposed to do in this, but right now I'm just taking it all in. Friday the 13th is more than movie franchise. There is also a television series, a comic book miniseries, yep. and four novels to date. Yeah, and the TV series had nothing to do with Jason. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Alright, the fireplace. Oh, there's a mask kid in there! The most requested playable Jason was director Adam Marcus and actor Kane Hodder's version and Jason Goes to Hell, which I don't see why, because Jason Goes to Hell sucks ass. This is ironic given how little screen time the movie gives to the corporate Jason. Yeah. Can I, like, bend down and pick that mask up? No? Okay, that's dirty. Oh, that's cool. It's got the two-seater outside. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I'm trying not to read like too much. If you want, you can pause the video. I'm not gonna go upstairs just yet. I'm gonna. You can pause the video and like read further detail. That door's locked. Oh the fuck! <laughs> Looking at people and just see two people in a little tent bed. <laughs> all right. These must be the directors of the game and stuff. Oh shit. Oh damn, girl. I caught you at a I I caught you her at a bad time. Character of Jenny Myers known as the girl next door is voiced by talented Christina Caleb. Unlike her character, Christine is a bit of a traveler, born in New Oh, it tells a little bit about the voice actress. Hmm. So it's kind of interesting. Why can't I pick Oh, red bandana? I thought it was a bra at first. What's this? Huh. Alright. Yeah, I had to take one last look at that ass before I went on. <laughs> Alright, nothing about food. Food? Food. <laughs> I know in the uh, trailer it said that Jason could actually show up and try and kill you while you're searching the cabin so I'm trying to be as cautious as I can this bitch all up in the kitchen where she belongs no, I'm just kidding Friday the 13th games features a wild range of voiceover talent Deborah Kim is voiced by a veteran Christy V who or Christina V my bad who has helped voice many popular animated and film projects that's kind of cool. This kind of reminds me of the spot where that woman in the th fourth, no, fifth movie. It was fifth movie. Mythos of Jason's Lies. The one where she's like, damn it, Billy, and she's like making that big ass pot of soup, and her head gets smashed into the window. <laughs> good times, good times. Alright, this time. ain't creepy at all. Music changing like that. This is gonna scare the shit out of me. I just know it. What was the creepiest part about working on the game? Oh, for sure, the phone calls. Okay, sorry. Um, that was great. Can you start over, but this time incorporate the question into your answer? Uh, my bad. Yeah. So the creepiest part about working on this game was I get these weird phone calls to my personal phone. We worked on the game for almost, uh, I think it was about three years, and every single Friday the 13th we would get these calls from someone. <laughs> at first I thought it was someone at the studio, Paul or Dan or something, but it had to be like an F-13 fanboy or something. They would use this voice distortion and claim to be Pamela warning us to honor the memory of her son. <laughs> Sometimes they would just laugh in the phone and hang up, but, but most of the times they would just, you know, complain about the game taking so long. That doesn't sound that creepy. It wasn't until one time I called the number back and heard this. <laughs> that was actually pretty badass. Hey, I found the battery. <laughs> that was actually pretty badass uh, of him. Now the guy said uh, that that uh, the guy asked him. He said, "What was the creepiest part about making the video game?" And he said, "Definitely the phone calls." And he's like, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Well, every Friday the thirteenth." 
or every Friday, we would get a phone call from someone who's using a voice changer, pretending to be uh, Mar uh, Pamela Voorhees. And they would uh, say, you know, in honor of our, my son Jason, and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, he said, the creepiest part is when I called the number back, all I heard was this, and it went, ch 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 I said that was actually pretty badass. All right, done down here. Let's go check upstairs. Here's I Chad and the other guy. I can't remember his name off the bat. A Bugsy, the that's it. There's up here chilling, having a beer, having a brewski. The other guy. According to director Jason Zito, the entire cast and crew believed part four to be the final up? Friday film. Not only was the title the final chapter, the script called for Jason's head to be split open in the final wow. kill. Even Harry Manfredi's musical cue for the final scene was named Le Morte de Jason. <laughs> oh, I hope they messed it up. We'll find out. Oh, that's kind of cool. Is this that VHS hidden secret? Yeah, here it is. Long, a long night at Camp Blood. That's what the this is actually supposed to have been called. Uh, but they changed the name to Friday the Thirteenth. But yeah, the original name of Friday the Thirteenth was supposed to be a long night at Camp Blood. It's true. Which in the movie they even refer to it as Camp Blood. You don't want to go to Camp Crystal Lake. That's Camp Blood. I'm here's here a few of the masks. Costume. There's part five mask right there. My costume. Not and Jacob's person. There's a few masks missing on this wall. Is that part of the clue? Yeah, that's probably part of the clue. Then the one downstairs at the fire, y'all should be able to get. What's so secret about a mug? <laughs> it's like picks up a little cup. Game development can be consuming and somewhat blah 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 blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go back and actually read these when I do it myself. I just wanted to do kind of like a first time testing this out. Seeing what this is all about. Oh cool, this is all the weapons from the movie series. That's actually pretty cool. And that bird just glitched up totally. Made it look like it was moving. Pitchfork, bow and arrow. This is pretty badass. Summer Slasher Volume 1 Summer Camp. Even before they had the license, the developers at Gun Media intended to write a love letter to Friday series and knew they needed the legends to do it. Speaking of their early days, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Jason is dead. Two for one burger sale. Okay. Oh, hey, this is Tommy's room. These are all his masks. <laughs> that's kind of cool. I remember that one. That's the one. Oh, can we call Tommy real quick here? Throughout the series, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's what it says. It says throughout the series, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of cool. And here's all the uh, stuff that you can get throughout the game. Higgins Haven. There's the boat. Oh, that's the boat from the first movie. Bad, like other movies in the series, part two had a difficult time receiving an R rating from the Motion Picture Association of America. An X rating was the only uh, was avoided once. Forty-eight seconds had been trimmed. One scene that raised the ire of censors, particularly, was the murder scene of Jess and Jeff and Sandra impaled by a spear while having sex in a bed. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Coming soon. The door is locked, but written on it is coming soon. Oh, that's so badass. Badass. So there's going to be some updates to uh, the virtual cabin. Oh, this ain't creepy at fucking all right here.
John Shepard played the shell-shocked Tommy Jarvis in the fifth film, A New Beginning. Tommy, psychologically damaged by his run-in with Jason in the final chapter, is sent to a treatment facility called Pinehurst ha Halfway Home. Shepard took the role seriously, spending a few months volunteering at a state mental hospital to prepare. Oh, shit. <laughs> he really wanted to get that part down. I actually liked him as Tommy. I mean, I like the other guy playing Tommy as well, the one that they chose to go for the game, but I kind of wish that, like, they would add, like, wouldn't it be cool if they added, like, three different Tommies that you could play as whenever you call Tommy in? Like, one of them's the kid, he, like, shows up from the fourth one, and then the other one's the dude from the fifth movie, and then, of course, the one we're playing as now. So what's the deal? What's what are we supposed to do with this virtual cabin as of right now? Just kind of find little things here and there. Just kind of explore it a little bit. So I know that there's supposedly a Jason room that has all the Jasons. I mean, I'm sure I'm supposed to click on like everything and discover the secrets. But there is those masks, and there is a mask at the fireplace. I wonder if I could get it. I know Jason is supposed to show up at some point. What is this supposed to be? Check for updates. Unlock. F enter password. Oh, so do they, like, tell you certain passwords? Change date. Oh, I bet that's an Easter egg. Like if I changed it to an actual date of the movie or something, then something might happen. I'll have to look up like dates of different uh, Friday the 13th movies and test them out. Oh, fireplace, that's right. Don't look at my ass while I'm trying to look in the fire, okay? I saw the triangle was like info. But no, it will not select that mask. Oh, wait. Oh, durr. You can't reach in there and just grab the mask when there's a fire. Is there uh, something that I could like put out the fire with? Can I throw this fat guy in there? No, that would make the fire bigger. Um, what does reset? Th hmm. <laughs> and the rocket's red glare. <laughs> Sound like what you were humming. And we start over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I just wanted to uh, kind of do that in case of Jason was about to show up. But so far, from what I could tell, this is just a little tiny beta. So, there's really not much you can actually do during the beta. I know that about the music. What the fuck? <laughs> it just completely showed us the opposite side. Can I even get in there? No. <laughs> and well, bam. Can I like turn the shower on? Can I like walk with things? No. The shaving cream has a history. Oh. This is not the, this is the green tile. Oh. Wait. What does it say? Nudity is one of the hallmarks of a Friday film. Participally, principally female nudity. In the ninth installment, The Final Friday, at Adam Marcus subverted the expectation by including male nudity 
in roughly equal measure, including a scene. <laughs> which movie was it again? I need to watch this one. Including a scene which has been described by many as the homoerotic shaving scene. Levi, that's right up your alley, buddy. Who's Levi? You know. <laughs> Man, Levi gets a lot of treatment on this channel. I don't know who he is. But... So wait, if I click on something, it does have R to swivel like that. Triangle to like hide the info. And in circle. Is to put it back. So other than those buttons, none of these other buttons do shit. So is there anything I missed? Because I'm sure that this ain't all that there is to the virtual cabin. I guess there is. See, the little swivel thing is gone now. It's just triangle and circle. I already heard that one. Saw the shoes. What are y'all doing? Fapping with your controller? Not me. That's all I'm hearing. Wait. Oh, I thought that was like something. Waste of budget. Julius and Jason's box match in Friday Part 8. Must go to take place in Madison Square Garden. Huh. So I'm guessing I was like supposed to click on like everything. This looks like there's a hidden door right here actually. Okay, so the little peek to those characters. To that locked door kitchen I've been there I've been everywhere all right let me test something out here let me look up the let me check the date of the first Friday the 13th oh, 13th First movie date. Go. It was 1980. May 9, 1980. So let's try that. Change date to May 9. And it's 1980. Alright, set date, back, and we'll reset virtual cabin. Warning, this will reset virtual cabin process to the selected state. Oh, I thought it was date. Alright, did anything happen? That was the very first uh, date of the movie. Didn't look like nothing changed. That'd be kind of creepy if, like, you looked outside and saw, like, Jason walking around and shit. I would, like, shit so many bricks. <laughs> like, thunk, 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 thunk. Just so many bricks would have been shit this day. Well... I think that's all of the video I'm going to be recording. What's this sound down here? The bird cage? Nope. Okay. 
Uh, it says coming soon, so this is obviously just a beta run. Um, I don't think there's really nothing that is interactive at the moment. I think this is just a first glimpse at what the virtual reality cabin is all about. And you can feel free to comment below and say like if you would have selected to click on this or if you just did this it would activate so and so. You know, feel free to let me know because uh, I do want to test it all out. But as of right now I guess this is pretty much all that uh, all that I'm going to be doing here for the video. Oh that's kind of cool. Alright, well thank you for joining in. This is just the first beta look at uh, the Friday the 13th Virtual Cabin. Hope you guys had fun. I can't wait for more updates coming soon. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Discooskies! <laughs>